Hello everyone, welcome to Cloud Patshala's video series where the mysteries of new age technologies are unlocked and real world secrets revealed. Empower your career in cloud and DevOps with our comprehensive online courses. You would be learning the leading and on-demand technologies in the cloud like AWS, Terraform, Ansible, Git, GitHub, Jenkins, Docker and Kubernetes. Today in this video we would be going a step deeper into the world of Linux and understand the etc hosts file in Linux. The slash etc slash hosts file is a local static file that maps host name to the IP addresses in the system. It is used by the operating system as the first source of host name to IP address mapping before trying to query to the DNS server. Each line in the etc hosts file consists of an IP address followed by one or more host names separated by spaces like for example we could say 127.0.0.1 would point to local host, 192.168.1.100 would point to example.com. In this e example that we see above right so local host is mapped to the IP address 127.0.0.1 whereas example.com is mapped to IP address 192.168.1.100 the slash etc slash host file can be used for a variety of purposes such as overriding the DNS resolution for specific host names blocking access to malicious websites or ad networks speed of the access to frequently used websites by mapping their host names to IP addresses this would eliminate the amount of time it takes to query the DNS testing network configurations and applications on a larger scale by adding or modifying the entries in the slash etc slash host file you can control how the system resolves host names and which IP addresses it uses for specific host names however we have to keep in mind that changes to the slash etc slash host file only affects the local system and will not be propagated to other systems in the network or across the network. Let's look at a practical demo to understand the slash etc slash host file in deeper sense. For this I would be going into my AWS, AWS account so I have already created an EC2 instance for this purpose. I would copy the public IP and then go into my terminal, change into the directory where the key is present and then go ahead and connect to the server. I could use the SSH client and I would get the exact SSH command that I have to run in order to get to the server. Now that this has been added, so we are currently inside the server. Now. I would change my privileges to root and then what I could do is do a cat for etc hosts file and you would see that the current entry that I see is 127.0.0.1 is pointing to local host, local host dot local domain, local host 4, local host 4 dot local domain 4. The second entry that we see is for the IPv6, uh, though we are not using the IPv6 address spaces, uh, we still have a local entry that is available for the IPv6 address spaces. Now in order to test this, right, let's try to host a web server on our uh, EC2 instance and then try to understand how we could play around with this setup. I'll do an installation for HTTP D service. So I'll do this and this should install the service for us. Now that the service has been installed, I would quickly restart the service so that we have a system running. I would then vi into var www.html index.html and say this is testing the DNS via slash etc slash hosts file and I would put this 
So what happens now is I get do a clear screen, right? And if I do a curl, C U R L curl for local host, I would get the following output. Now the reason why we did not have um, the actual file that we created come as a default website is because the name that we have provided for HTML is wrong. So what I'll do is move this file into var dub 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 html it's index.html now if i try to do a curl for this i should get the following output now if you remember the etc hosts file so we also can use localhost4 as our domain name and this would also give us the same output that we got with localhost and this is also true if you want to use it via the localhost.local domain and this is also going to give you the same output that you see. Now let's try to create our own example.com. So what I'll do is go into the etc hosts file and I would put in my own entry asking for a change in this. So what I'll do is for 127.0.0.0.1 what I do is I would say demo.cloudpatashala.in and I would save the file. Now that the file is saved let's see if this works for us. All I now have to do is clear the screen do a curl for this entry and see if I am getting the domain or not so this is how we can test multiple things or this is how we could modify the DNS on the local system and try to access the same stuff what I could also do is have a parallel entry for saying demo.cp.in which would also mean that demo.cp.in should also be then moving into this own system. So this is how we could map multiple addresses or we could map things on our end. What we can also do is uh, create a different EC2 instance which would not have httpd service that is apache is not installed on it but we would be using this server to access the site which is hosted on the second server for this i would have to whitelist the server's security group that is the demo server security group in the linux so that the firewall allows seamless access to it so what i'll be doing is quickly going into the inbound and I'll be saying HTTP should be allowed on this. Uh, if you're if you're not aware of what these firewall rules are doing, um, I strongly recommend you to check the AWS playlist that we have in our channel, which would give you a fair understanding of what the security group rules are doing. So I'll open a new tab, cd into the stuff, and then SSH into the server. Now that I have already gone into the server, so what I could do is I could elevate my privileges. If I do a curl local host, I would not find anything because there is nothing running on the server at the moment on local host. Now if I do a cat for this etc slash host, you would find that there are only two entries that are pointing to this. Now what I could do is I would provide the details of my web server which is the first one that we created. I'd give the private IP address as one of the, I'm already in the insert mode, I'll paste the IP address and give a space and then say demo.cp.in. I could also say demo.cloudpart.shala.in and this should be working. Now what I could do is curl 
demo.cp.in and this should give me there was a typo so let's give it a proper name so once i do this you would find that even though i don't have the website running on my server which is on ip 172.31.1.12 i'm still able to access this now i am not using any dns service as of now uh, from route 53 or any other provider and by only adding the details of ip address and the domain in the slash etc slash host file i was able to access the website from a different server now it's obvious that we cannot be doing this on every server that is available for this specific reason we would only be using slash etc slash hosts file when it comes to troubleshooting specific issues related to connectivity and other related things a dns would be propagated to all the servers in the domain or in the network but then a slash etc slash host files is only and only specific to a particular server how can i prove that so what we can do is go into etc slash hosts and we could remove the last entry that we just created now that the entry has been deleted if i try to do the curl for the same url this should not be working because the system first tried to check if the entry was existing in the slash etc slash host file if it does not find the entry in that it would try to do a dns query and if there is no dns entry related to this application or this domain it would then give us a error saying that it could not resolve the host name i hope this brings much more clarity into what slash etc slash host files are in the next video we would be looking at what slash etc slash resolve.conf is doing in the server now, these two are very closely related to each other and work hand in hand for all the dns resolutions and queries that happen on a linux server that's it for this video friends please like and share the video if you're not subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button thank you so much for watching keep having a great day